Hello and welcome to St. Martin's for the fourth Sunday of Easter. I'm the Reverend A.J. Buckley and this is my husband, Brother Finn Cole, who'll be giving the sermon today. We invite you to follow along and read all the um, responses that are in italics. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, If we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick, and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you, and to all the people of Israel, that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the chief cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 23, which we will read in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is a reading from the first epistle of John. We know love by this that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. 
All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Beloved of God, I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love the 23rd Psalm. The pastoral imagery, the intimate relationship with God, the assurances of protection and nurture. The Lord really is my shepherd, and all of it warms my heart. But I also kind of giggle at the last verse. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, I know, I know, it doesn't exactly make for knee-slapping comedy, but hear me out. The word follow in the Hebrew text of this psalm is something like yirdepuni. And it's the only time this form of the word follow is used in the whole Bible. It carries with it the meaning of hunting, tracking, pursuing, like a divine bloodhound or a sacred Labrador. Surely, it seems to say, your goodness and mercy shall chase my sorry butt down no matter how many times I wander off like an idiot sheep, hell-bent on destroying itself for sheer stupidity. Yep, that sounds about right. So, Jesus is the good shepherd who cares for his sheep and loves them and lays down his life for them and calls them by name and keeps them healthy and safe. And we're the sheep. Got it. Makes sense. Feels good too, doesn't it? I always loved those paintings of Jesus as the good shepherd. You know the ones where he has suspiciously pale skin, almost blonde hair, blue eyes, that placid smile, carrying a lamb over his shoulders. There was at least one in every church I ever met during my youth. I liked them. They gave me a sense of peace, of safety. I could imagine being lifted onto those shoulders and carried to the greenest pastures and coolest waters. And that kind of imagery has its place in Christian teaching for sure, but I'm not going to be able to preach that for you today. See, here's the deal. We're not supposed to be sheep for life. I mean, yes, I am a willful, stubborn, petulant child of God, prone to boneheaded displays of fallibility that have got to exasperate the Most High on a regular basis. And Jesus truly is the good shepherd who will chase after me in my woolly-headed escapades and drag me back into the sheepfold by my hind legs, no matter how much I squirm and bleat. 
He will unfailingly rescue me from the proverbial wolves, thorn bushes, and thieves, and even more, from my own sheepish misdeeds, for which I am eternally grateful. But it's an absolute travesty that so many Christian teachers decide to stop there. But yes, it gives me a nice, warm, confident, saved feeling. But it barely scratches the surface of the rich, deep, formative mystery that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, we have a wonderful opportunity to delve deeper, provided to us by the appointed Bible readings, particularly the Gospel of John and the Epistle also of John. Uh, most scholars agree that these two books were written by the same person or people, which is tremendously helpful to us because it means we can read them together as parts of a broader look at the spirituality of John's community. So think about how Jesus describes himself in the gospel lesson as the good shepherd. Lays down his life deeply loves those under his care, knows us and is known by us. And then look how John describes in the epistle how we are to live as children of God, to lay down our lives for each other, to love one another purely and completely, to abide in Jesus and in one another, being known and knowing. Do you see what we're getting at here? I believe John is saying that just as Jesus was the good shepherd to the world during his earthly life, so now we are to be good shepherds in the same way. Now I'm willing to admit to you that that sounds hard and a little scary. A good shepherd is willing to lay down their life for those in their care. And that's not just talking about bodily martyrdom, you know? If it were just a reference to giving up my physical life, that would almost be easier than what we're talking about here. I mean, at least I'd get to rest at the end of it. But that's not what Jesus is saying. What he's saying here is that a good shepherd is willing to lay down their whole life, all the parts of their life, their desires, their preferences, their plans, their dreams, their riches, their possessions, even their status, everything. And then keep following him past the loss of all that. I don't know about you, but that's just about the hardest thing anyone's ever asked me to do. And I'm, if I'm completely honest, I don't know that I'd have the strength to fully commit to it when asked. In truth, knowing what I know about the sheepish stupidities of humanity in general and of me in particular, does it even seem possible? Well, that's the good news. Jesus has made it possible. Some of you might remember that the last time I got to speak to you, I preached on St. Mark's Passion, specifically that sacred, universe-altering moment of Jesus' death, in which the enormous, thick curtain of the temple was torn in half, and the presence of God who is love poured out and would never again be contained. I told you then, and I'll tell you now, the very creator of the universe has chosen to dwell with you, not in churches or books, but with you and in you, if you'll let them. John reminded us today that God can abide in us and us in them, meaning that love can be a part of the fabric of our very being. Jesus today showed us just how powerfully he loves us in laying down his own divine life. The psalmist assures us that no matter what, 
God's goodness and mercy are chasing us down every moment of every day, pursuing us in order to love us and bless us more and more. All these assurances and so many more point to a truth of the gospel. As Christ has loved, so we can love. As Christ has lived, so we can live. As Christ once was embodied in human flesh, so we are now his blessed body, given the joyful task of loving the broken world back together. We are invited and empowered to be the Jesus that the world needs. So, go into your life as both sheep and shepherd, knowing that the God who is love is with you now and always. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us place ourselves in a posture of prayer responding to each bidding with Lord graciously hear us. Gathered in the care of the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep, let us pray to God who knows our every need. For the holy churches in every place and for the unity of all, Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. For the for this parish family of St. Martin's, that we will faithfully bear witness to the risen Christ in word and deed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For this holy assembly, and for all who gather in the name of the risen Christ, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Diana, our bishop, for the clergy, deacons, chaplains, and all who minister in Christ, for all the holy people of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the world and its leaders, our nation and its people, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those in danger and need, the sick and the suffering, the strayed and the lost. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who walk in death's dark valley, that they may rest in the peace of Christ. 
especially Tina Hadley and the victims of violence and disease. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves, our families, and those we love, especially those on our prayer list and those we name silently or aloud. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. Remembering the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Martin, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To To you, you, O Lord. Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, for you soothe our head with oil and fill our cup with wine. Hear the prayers we offer for every need, and revive us with your Holy Spirit. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful merciful God, God, we we confess confess that we have have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Together let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, open our eyes and ears to perceive you at work in creation, the church, and our parish. Fill our hearts with your love that we may reach out in love to others. Stir up our imagination with your Holy Spirit that we may find new ways to live into life with you. Give us a vision of your mission that we may share your love and your spirit in all the places where we work and play and worship with you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.